Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We're continuing the sharh of Lamiyat ibn al Wardi, the hikam and advices of Ibn al Wardi to his son and to all of us. They're always very juicy. I know the young guys like it a lot. Wahjuri al Khamrata in Kunta Fatan, Kaifa Yesha fi Junun in Manakal, Wat Taki Laha Fatakwallahi ma, Jawarat Kalbamri in Illa Wasal. ليس من يقطع طرقا بطلا إنما من يتق الله البطل Ibn al-Wardi رضي الله عنه the great shafi'i, the great scholar he said in the first bait I mentioned وَهْجُرِ الْخَمْرَةَ إِنْ كُنْتَ فَتًا كَيْفَ يَسْعَى فِي جُنُونٍ مَنْ عَقَلْ Leave off intoxication, leave off drinking specifically, specifically drinking إِنْ كُنْتَ فَتًا if you are a young man كَيْفَ يَسْعَى فِي جُنُونٍ مَنْ عَقَلْ He says that how can someone who has been gifted intellect choose to intoxicate himself? How can someone who is gifted intellect choose to put himself in a state of no control over himself? You know, and you know, even the greatest, one of the greatest companions, Hamza radiallahu anhu, the one who died in uh, which battle? Uhud, the one who's buried in the, where the martyrs of Uhud are buried, right? Even Hamza radiallahu anhu, there is a story where once, this is before Khamar was haram, okay? This is when Khamar was still permissible. This is before uh, drinking was, alcohol was made prohibited. He was drinking, radiallahu anhu, he was drinking and he was with his friends. And he, and he uh, you know, Ali radiallahu anhu, from, I think, it was the, I think it was the Battle of Badr, I believe, yes. He had two naqas that he was given from the battle, you know, from a portion of the battle was distributed back to the soldiers and also he got an extra share because he was from uh, Ahl al-Bayt. And so Ali radiallahu an, you know, Hamza actually slaughtered the camels of Ali while he was drunk. And those camels belonged to Ali radiallahu an. And Ali radiallahu an, you know, he was preparing all of these things to, or, you know, you know, decorate his camels and whatnot. He bought a lot of, he, he spent money on them basically. And when he saw that the camels were sacrificed by his own uncle Hamza radiallahu an, he went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, as soon as he saw him, he immediately saw in his face that something was up. And then he said, Malak. And then he said, you know, Hamza radiallahu an, he did this and this. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam immediately put, out, put on his rida. And he went out. He was with Zayd ibn Haritha radiallahu an, who was basically like the son of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Because in, before Islam came and prohibited, uh, you know, the idea of adopting and naming uh, someone after you. His name was Zayd ibn Muhammad. The people knew him by Zayd ibn Muhammad. You know, because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa told them that. And so they went, the three of them, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Zayd ibn Haritha, and Ali radiallahu anhu Hamza. And they saw him, and he's with, you know, his friends that are drunk as well. And Hamza radiallahu anhu, when he saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was like eyeing him up and down, looked at his feet. It's mentioned in the hadith. Looked at his, you know, stomach. Looked at his eyes. You know, this is him. He's in a state. He's completely drunk. He knows who Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is. He knows the people that he's looking at before he was drunk. But now, because he's drunk, he doesn't. He doesn't recognize. He says, "Inna ma antum abidun li abi." He said, "You are, but you are just slaves of my father." That's what he told them in a state of, you know, while he was drunk. Radiallahu an. And so even a companion at, uh, as, at the level of Hamza radiallahu an had no control over himself. So what about us? You know, we would not want to put ourselves in a state where perhaps we might do harm on someone we love. And Hamza radiallahu an loved no more, no, nobody more than the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He gave his life for him. You know, he gave his life for his sake, for his cause. When he saw Abu Jahl harm his, uh, his, his, uh, his nephew, he immediately struck him with his, with his uh, bow. He said, how dare you harm my, you know, my nephew? This was Hamza radiallahu anhu. But when he was drunk, he had no control over himself. Right? So we should not want to put ourselves in that state. You know, and I saw a funny video recently. You know, the uh, Shia, sorry, I just have to say this. They have their own very funny fiqh. Ma adri min in ja'ubi hadha al-fiqh, min jub. Yani, adalil laysa min al-Qur'an wa la min al-Sunnah min al-Jub. He was drinking alcohol, okay? He was drinking alcohol. And he said the dalil is that حَتَّى نَعْتَادْ وَنَتَعَوَّدْ 
على شرب الخمر في الجنة هذا هو الدليل The Shi'i he said that, He said the reason it's allowed to drink a little bit of alcohol Is so we can get used to it for Jannah Obviously we don't ما راح الجنة أصلا لكن الفيديو مضحك جدا He said that we are drinking So what? We are drinking alcohol so we can get used to it in Jannah أستغفر الله And then he said Ibn al-Wardi وَاتَّقِ اللَّهَ فَتَقْوَ اللَّهِ مَا جَاوَرَتْ قَلْبَ مْرِئٍ إِلَّا وَصَلْ Fear Allah Before all of the advices that were given And I mentioned in the past three weeks Were all things that you shouldn't do You shouldn't do Now he's saying what you should do وَاتَّقِ اللَّهِ Have God consciousness Fear of Allah Azza wa Jal فَتَقْوَ اللَّهِ مَا جَاوَرَتْ قَلْبَ مْرِئٍ إِلَّا وَصَلْ That whenever it is accompanied in the heart Or it is placed in the heart of a person إِلَّا وَصَلْ It will allow them to reach إِلَّا وَصَلْ إِلَى رِضَ اللَّهِ وَالْجَنَّةِ That if someone has taqwa And where is taqwa? At-taqwa ha-huna The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam When referring to taqwa He said at-taqwa ha-huna And he pointed to his chest At-taqwa ha-huna At-taqwa ha-huna And Ali radiallahu anhu When explaining what is taqwa He said Al-khawfu min al-jaleel And والعمل بالتنزيل والرضا بالقليل والاستعداد ليوم الرحيل. This is what Ali رضي الله عنه used to describe taqwa. Very powerful, very comprehensive. Having fear of Allah عز وجل. خوف من الجليل. You're always aware of Him. In secrecy, in front of people, you are always having that taqwa that will prevent you from sinning. الخوف من الجليل والعمل بالتنزيل. And that you what? You do actions with التنزيل. Quran and Sunnah. Not from الجيب وتشرب الخمر حتى تعتاد على شربه في الجنة لا <تصفيق> العمل بالتنزيل والرضا بالقليل that you are content with what Allah gives you and you are preparing yourself ليوم الرحيل this is what taqwa is and they say التقوى سلاح الأقوى that taqwa is the weapon of the strong person taqwa God consciousness is the weapon for the strong man and then that's why he said, "ليس من يقطع طرقا بطلا إنما من يتق الله البطل الله." That not the one who cuts off the path roads of people, the one who has the big muscles to show, the one who can harm people. Can this is not a strong person? A true strong person, a true strong man, is someone إنما من يتق الله البطل. The one. Who can hold himself back The one who has discipline The one who can place his aql over his hawa You know many people nowadays They suffer from being servants and slaves to their desires Many many shabab nowadays are slaves to their own desires If their desire says go left, they go left If their desire says go right, they go right And it's usually chasing after women Usually chasing after the dunya This is the case And Ibn al-Wardi he is telling us here that the real strong man and the man that we should strive to be and the woman that a woman should strive to be is the one who fears Allah Azza wa Jal. Because the real weapon for a person that is strong is what? At-taqwa. At-taqwa, silahul aqwa. And so I'm going to end it here inshaAllah. And so what we, what we learned today, just to summarize, is that taqwa is what we should strive to have. And that is what is true strength. وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين